Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is about adenoxal imaging. This is the first video in this video series with title of Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome. The outline of this presentation include introduction, epidemiology, high-risk groups for polycystic ovarian syndrome, clinical manifestations, which can classified as reproductive abnormalities, hyperandrogenism, and metabolic issues. Diagnosis, diagnosis recommendations, PCO syndrome diagnosis in postmenopausal women, differential diagnosis, and final teaching points. At first, introduction. Polycystic ovary syndrome, a heterogeneous complex genetic trait of unclear and likely multiple etiologies, is an important cause of cardiometabolic risks, ovulatory and menstrual irregularity, subfertility and infertility, and clinically evident hyperandrogenism. When fully expressed, the manifestations include androgen excess, ovulatory dysfunction, and polycystic ovaries. Epidemiology Polycystic ovary syndrome is recognized as one of the most common endocrine metabolic disorders in females. Its prevalence depends in part upon the diagnostic criteria used to define the disorder since each criteria includes a varying number of PCOS phenotypes. Most studies globally have observed a prevalence between 10 and 14 percent. High-risk groups for PCO syndrome Women with oligoovulatory infertility, obesity or insulin resistance, type 1, 2 or gestational diabetes mellitus, a history of premature odernark, first-degree relatives with PCO syndrome, certain racial and ethnic groups and for example, Mexican, American, and indigenous Australians, and also use of anti seizure medications, in particular sodium valproate. Clinical manifestations Because PCO syndrome diagnosis largely depends on clinical symptoms, familiarity with these symptoms seems essential. Clinical manifestations of PCO syndrome range from mild signs of hyperandrogenism in thin, normally menstruating women to the classic Stein Leventhal syndrome, with oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea, hirsutism, and obesity. Clinical manifestations relative to reproductive abnormalities include oligo or amenorrhea caused by infrequent or absent ovulation, gonadotropin dynamics disturbances, including an increase in mean LH levels, but FSH may be normal or low, leading to an elevated LH-FSH ratio. Another clinical findings is endometrial cancer risk and pregnancy complications, including spontaneous abortion, miscarriage, gestational diabetes mellitus, hypertension and preeclampsia, and a higher risk of premature delivery and caesarean section. Clinical manifestations relative to hyperandrogenism. These findings include hirsutism, acne, and female pattern higher loss. But here we must pay attention to one important point. Women with PCO syndrome do not develop realization with clinical findings of deepening of voice or clitoromegaly. If realization occurs, other causes of hyperandrogenism should be investigated, including ovarian hypertechosis or an androgen-secreting neoplasm of the ovary or adrenal gland. Some hyperandrogenic women have mildly elevated serum prolactin levels, but the etiology and clinical significance is uncertain. But if levels of prolactin in excess of 40 mg per deciliter should prompt evaluation for other causes. Clinical manifestations related to metabolic issues. This series of clinical manifestations include obesity and insulin resistance, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, type 2 diabetes, 
this lipidemia, including low HDL and increased LDL and TG. Diagnosis the diagnosis and management of PCO syndrome is controversial and inconsistent. By current international consensus known as Rotterdam PCO syndrome diagnostic criteria, the diagnosis of PCO syndrome requires two of the three features, including oligo or unovulation, clinical and or biochemical hyperandrogenism, and polycystic ovaries. Thus, the rule of ultrasound is not to diagnose the syndrome, but to establish polycystic ovarian morphology. In PCS syndrome, the ovaries typically harbor an increased number of follicles in various stages of maturation and atresia, resulting in bilaterally enlarged ovaries containing multiple small between 2 to 9 mm of follicles as you can see in this image and often with increased stromal echogenicity. The ovaries have a rounded shape with the follicles usually located peripherally, famous as a string of pearls, also they can also occur randomly throughout the ovarian parenchyma, as you can see in this clip. The criteria defining polycystic ovarian morphology have varied. The first criteria were presented at 2003, famous as the Rotterdam PCO syndrome diagnostic criteria. The second revision was presented at 2014, but the last criteria that we must use was presented at 2018. The 2003 consensus concluded a woman meets the criteria for polycystic ovarian morphology when there are 12 or more small between 2 to 9 mm follicles in one or both ovaries and or one or both ovaries are greater than 10 ml in volume. So, according to 2003 criteria, one ovary with more than 12 small follicles or one ovary volume more than 10 ml is enough to diagnose PCO morphology. In Rotterdam criteria, peripheral follicle distribution and increased stromal echogenicity while supportive of polycystic ovarian morphology were omitted as a specific criteria for diagnosis. However, with advances in ultrasound resulting in improved visualization of follicle number and more accurate determination of ovarian volume, increasing numbers of ovulatory women without metabolic issues were classified as having polycystic ovarian morphology. And in one study, about 32% of reproductive age women met the Rotterdam criteria for polycystic ovaries, with nearly 62% of women ages between 25 to 30 having polycystic ovaries. As a result, this society proposed a revision of PCO morphology definition in 2014, recommending that PCO morphology be designated as present when ultrasound using transducers of 8 MHz show at least one ovary with 25 follicles and ovarian volume threshold of 10 ml only applicable when ovarian evaluation with high frequency transducer is not possible. However, in the most recent international consensus articulated on behalf of the International PCO Syndrome Network in 2018, the number of follicles is stated as 20 per ovary and ovarian volume 10 ml is still accepted as a diagnostic criterion, but when there is no corpus luteum, cyst, or dominant follicle, that might contribute to measured ovarian volume. So, according to this criteria, if we found one ovary with at least 20 small follicles or one large ovary with 10 ml or more volume, we can consider PCO morphology. This 2018 consensus also presents diagnosis recommendations.
At first, ultrasound should not be used for the diagnosis of PCO syndrome in those with a gynecological age of less than 8 years, means less than 8 years after menarche, due to high incidence of multifollicular ovaries in this life stage. The threshold for PCO morphology should be revised regularly with advancing ultrasound technology and age-specific cutoff values for PCO morphology should be defined. The transvaginal ultrasound approach is preferred in the diagnosis of PCO syndrome if sexually active and if acceptable to the individual being assessed. By using endovaginal ultrasound transducer with a frequency bandwidth that includes 8 megahitters, the threshold for PCO morphology on either ovary is a follicle number per ovary of 20 or more and or an ovarian volume about 10 ml or more on either ovary. But we must ensure that there is no corpus lutea, cyst or dominant follicles. If we use older technology, the threshold for PCO morphology could be an ovarian volume about 10 ml or more on either ovary. In patients with irregular menstrual cycles and hyperandrogenism, an ovarian ultrasound is not necessary for PCO syndrome diagnosis. However, ultrasound will identify the complete PCO syndrome phenotype. In transabdominal ultrasound, reporting is best focused on ovarian volume, a threshold of 10 ml or more given the difficulty of reliably assessing follicle number with this approach. Clear protocols are recommended for reporting follicle number per ovary and ovarian volume or ultrasound. Recommended minimum reporting standards include last menstrual period, transducer bandwidth frequency, approach or root access, transabdominal or transvaginal, total follicle number per ovary measuring 2 to 9 mm. We must report three dimension and volume of each ovary, and reporting of endometrial thickness and appearance is preferred. Three layer endometrial assessment may be useful to screen for endometrial pathology. Of course, other ovarian and uterian pathology should be reported, as well as ovarian cyst, corpus luteum, and dominant follicles. There is a need for training in careful and meticulous follicle counting per ovary to improve reporting, as you can see in this image. PCO syndrome diagnosis in postmenopausal women. As we know, ovarian volume and follicle number decrease with age in women with or without PCO syndrome. While age-based criteria for PCO syndrome have been proposed for women over age 14 years, there currently are no well-established criteria in postmenopausal women. However, when postmenopausal women present with new onset or worsening hirsutism or other symptoms of severe hyperandrogenism, transvaginal ultrasound should always be performed to rule out disorders such as ovarian hypertechosis and other imaging modalities to rule out androgen secreting tumors. Differential diagnosis. The differential diagnosis for PCO syndrome includes non-classic congenital adrenal hyperplasia, androgen secreting tumors or ovarian hypertechosis, hyper or hypothyroidism, and hyperprolactinemia. Now, please pay attention to this final teaching point. Women are sometimes referred for PCO syndrome based upon the incidental finding of cystic ovaries on pelvic ultrasound or other abdominal imaging. If there are no other clinical features of PCO syndrome, no further evaluation is needed, as sonographically or radiographically detected polycystic ovaries are a non-specific finding. Ultrasound should not be used for the diagnosis of PCO syndrome in those with a gynecological age of less than 8 years due to a high incidence of multifollicular ovaries in this life stage. The transvaginal rather than transabdominal approach should be used whenever possible. 
However, not all women with possible PCO syndrome undergo ultrasound. If the patient has both oligomenorrhea and evidence of hyperandrogenism and causes other than PCO syndrome have been ruled out, she meets criteria for the diagnosis of PCO syndrome and an ultrasound is not necessary. It's important to note that follicle number and size not cyst are relevant to an ultrasound diagnosis. Women with PCO syndrome do not develop realization with clinical findings of deepening of voice or clitoromegaly. If realization occurs, other causes of hyperandrogenism should be investigated, including ovarian hypertechosis or an androgen secreting neoplasm of the ovary or adrenal gland. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.